All right, so we're back and, you know, diving into a few things um, you sent our way. Oh, and it looks like you're particularly interested in how this all connects back to, like, this whole, you know, idea of gel information and discord. We've got, like, this, this Reddit thread. You know, it's called, People Surprised That Trump Won Simply Live in an Echo Chamber. And then some of your text messages. Looks like you had a pretty interesting conversation going there. Oh, and then a CNN article about some, some pretty messed up text messages. So, yeah, let's just jump right into it, huh? What do you think? Yeah, sounds good. Okay, cool. So starting with that Reddit thread. Yeah. Really dives right into, like, you know, the whole post-election vibe. And it's super interesting to see, like, how people are kind of wrapping their heads around the results. Some people are saying, you know, those who were surprised by Trump's win, they were maybe stuck in, like, an online echo chamber. One user even said they, like, unsubscribed from all these left-leaning YouTube channels, and they were totally blindsided by how big the win was. Mm -hmm. Someone else is talking about how, you know, people who weren't really into politics were just getting, like, low information. And they felt like the result wasn't really a surprise at all. So it seems like a lot of people realizing their online world might not be, you know, the same as the real world. Mm -hmm. Then there's this whole other thing where some users are claiming that Reddit itself was targeted, like by this coordinated astroturfing campaign, which is basically creating like a fake grassroots movement, potentially even like orchestrated on Discord to manipulate, you know, people's opinions about the election on Reddit kind of makes you wonder about, you know, what's real online, right? Yeah, for sure. Like, it's getting harder and harder to tell the difference between real conversations and just, mm -hmm. like, stuff that's made up to push a certain narrative. It makes you think, you know, what are these platforms doing to, like, spot and stop these campaigns? Because if we can't even agree on, like, what's real, how are we supposed to talk to each other? Right. And it's crazy how, like, so many users are on the same page about these echo chambers. Even if they don't agree on, you know, everything politically, there are some who say they got banned from subreddits just for saying they're conservative. And then others are arguing that, like, these left-leaning echo chambers, they kind of act like they're morally superior, which just shuts down any kind of open discussion. Uh -huh. There's even a comment comparing Reddit to, like, an abusive relationship. You know, like, mm -hmm. conform or get out mm -hmm. really shows you how this lack of, you know, different viewpoints and just open dialogue. It can really make people feel divided and distrustful. What about you? Did any comments, like, really jump out at you? You know, there was this one comment. It was a quote from Carl Sagan about, like, the dumbing down of America. Mm -hmm. And the person who posted it was, you know, really going on about how anti-intellectualism is on the rise and how people are celebrating ignorance, which, you know, they see as contributing to all this discord. I think it really speaks to the that feeling of disillusionment and distrust that we were just talking about. Like we're losing faith in our ability to like think things through together. Yeah, that's that's pretty heavy. It actually kind of reminds me of that text message conversation you sent over. The person you were texting with, they made a really good point about how like we can't even agree on basic facts anymore and it's just making it easier for authoritarianism to take hold. Mm -hmm. They were really worried about this culture of lies, like that's what they called it, and how it's being used by leaders who just, you know, twist the truth and pick on vulnerable groups to stay in power. They even said, America, buckle up, you're on the ride. Which, I don't know, sounds kind of scary. What do you think about that? Yeah, it's, it's definitely a warning sign. But unfortunately, it's not like this hasn't happened before. Throughout history, I mean, we've seen how when truth starts to erode and disinformation spreads, it can create like a perfect environment for authoritarian regimes to rise up. Think about Nazi Germany. They purposely spread propaganda and lies to create division and fear among the people. And that manipulation of information, it ultimately contributed to, you know, the persecution of minorities and the breakdown of democratic institutions. Obviously, things are different in America today, but the similarities, they are, you know, kind of worrisome. It really makes you think about how delicate democracy really is. And that CNN article you sent, it just drives that point home. Those racist text messages targeting black people. Talk about slave catchers and picking cotton. It's just, it's messed up. And it shows how hate speech can take advantage of these divisions, especially when things are already so politically charged. The article even quotes one of the people who received the messages, Talia Jones. Mm -hmm. She said she was shocked, then angry and sad. And she realized we didn't come as far as everybody thought we did as a nation. Uh, and then there's Alyssa. She was a freshman at the University of Alabama. She was in tears. She just wanted to go home after she got those messages. It's clear that these messages are bringing up a lot of painful memories and 
it's just heartbreaking to see the impact they're having. What's really scary is that these messages seem like they were designed to, you know, exploit this discord that we've been talking about. They use this dehumanizing language and tap into people's fears and anxieties to, you know, incite fear and maybe even violence. It feels like we're seeing this dangerous trend where disinformation isn't just used to like change people's minds. It's being used to intimidate and silence certain oh, groups. Exactly. And it goes back to what we were saying about scapegoating. When a society has trouble dealing with complex problems, it's easy to just, you know, look for easy answers and blame someone. And sadly, it's usually the marginalized groups who end up suffering most. These text messages are a stark reminder that disinformation isn't just some abstract idea. It has real consequences. And those consequences can be devastating for the people who are targeted. It's a wake-up call for all of us to be more vigilant against hate speech and to really work towards promoting empathy and understanding across different groups in society. We need to ask ourselves, you know, how do we counter this trend? How do we rebuild trust in a world where the truth seems harder and harder to find? Those are some really big questions. It feels like we're at a crossroads and the choices we make now are going to have a huge impact on the future. Maybe exploring those choices would be a good place to start in the next part of our dive. You know, it is interesting to think about that crossroads thing. It's like what you shared, you know, it kind of feels like we're moving into this time where disinformation isn't just like a little problem. It's like a main feature of how we talk to each other and do politics. Yeah, it's like someone changed the rules of the game and we're all still trying to figure out how to play. Exactly. And the stakes, they're huge. If we can't agree on like basic facts, how are we going to solve these massive problems? Like climate change or or economic inequality, all this polarization in politics. Honestly, it's a lot. It's kind of overwhelming. Mm. You know, where do we even start with something this big? I think, well, the first thing is to realize we're not totally helpless. We can't like control all the information out there, but we can learn how to deal with it better. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, remember that Reddit thread? Those people talking about being shocked by the election. They realized their online world. It wasn't the real world, you know? That's a big first step, just realizing we're in these echo chambers. Like realizing you've been living in a bubble this whole time. Yeah, exactly. And once you see that bubble, you can start to poke holes in it. One way is to like really try to see different viewpoints, make an effort to get your news from places that, you know, maybe you don't usually agree with and be willing to actually talk to people who think differently, you know, respectfully, of course. But isn't that like kind of dangerous? Won't that just make things more confusing? It could. Yeah. But I think it's worth it. Seeing different viewpoints, it helps us understand complicated stuff better. It makes us question what we think we know and maybe consider, like, other explanations. It's like that saying, you don't know what you don't know. Right. And a lot of times what we think we know is based on, like, bad information or just one side of the story. When we broaden our horizons, we can become smarter about what we believe. That makes sense. But even if we escape these echo chambers... There's still all this disinformation everywhere. Those text messages are a perfect example. How do we protect ourselves from that kind of manipulation? That's where critical thinking comes in. We need to learn how to judge information, to tell fact from opinion, and to spot those, those propaganda tricks. So it's not just what we read or watch, it's how we think about it. Exactly. we got to have a healthy dose of skepticism. Ask ourselves, who made this? What's their angle? What evidence do they have? It's like we need to be detectives, always Aww. checking things out, making sure it's legit. In a way, yeah. We got to be active, not passive. We're in control of the information we let in. Which brings us back to what those people on Reddit were saying about education. We need to give people the tools to deal with all this information overload and, and disinformation. Absolutely. Media literacy, it should be a core part of education right from the start. Teach kids how to think critically, how to judge sources, how to spot bias. So it's not just protecting ourselves from lies. It's about becoming informed, active citizens. Exactly. And that includes knowing the history of all this, the disinformation, the propaganda. Remember that Nazi Germany comparison? Knowing how they use those tactics, it helps us see and resist them today. Like learning from history's mistakes so we don't repeat them. Right. But history also tells us that disinformation, it's not always obvious. It can be sneaky quiet, even funny. Think about how satire and humor can spread misinformation. Yeah, that's a good point. Sometimes it's hard to know what's real and what's a joke, especially online. And that confusion, it can be used against us. 
we got to remember, it's not always bad guys spreading this stuff. Sometimes it's people with good intentions who just haven't learned how to tell truth from lies. So it's not just about fighting the bad guys. It's about building a culture where everyone is skeptical and thinks critically. Exactly. Everyone's got to play a part in this fight against disinformation. It's not just the government, the tech companies, or the teachers. It starts with each of us taking responsibility for the information we choose to consume and share. Okay, I'm starting to feel a little bit better about all this. It's less scary when it's not just on me, when it's everyone's responsibility, you know. I get it. And remember, even in those, like, dark corners of the internet, there was some good stuff in that Reddit thread. Some people talked about breaking out of their echo chambers, wanting to see other viewpoints, having good conversations with people who disagree. That's hopeful. It means that even with all the division and distrust, people still want truth, connection, understanding. And that's what we need to focus on. We need to make spaces where open dialogue and critical thinking are important, where we can disagree respectfully and learn from each other. It's a good reminder that we're not just, you know, absorbing information. We're actually creating meaning. Hmm. The choices we make, what we share, the conversations we have, it all shapes the world around us. Yeah, that's powerful stuff. It means even with all this disinformation and discord, we can still make a difference. So what can we actually do, practically speaking, to make that difference? That's a great question, and one we're going to tackle in the next part of our dive. We'll look at some strategies to fight disinformation, encourage critical thinking, and build a stronger, more informed society. Okay, so we've, we've talked about, you know, the, the challenges with all this information flying around, this feeling that, like, disinformation and discord are just becoming, like, normal, you know? But I got to say, after talking with you, I'm feeling, I don't know, a little bit hopeful, cautiously optimistic, maybe. It seems like we can actually do something about this, you know, both on our own and together. Yeah, I agree. It's easy to get bogged down by how big this problem is, but we can't just give up. We got to focus on what we can actually change. And that starts with us. OK, so let's get down to it. What can we actually do to, like, fight this disinformation and make a society that's more informed and tougher? Well, we've already talked about a few important things, right? Knowing our own biases, knowing about those echo chambers. we got to make a real effort to mix up where we get our information from, you know? Hmm. Seek out stuff from sources we might not always agree with and be ready to have those, those tough conversations with people who see things differently. Respectfully, of course. Sounds like a good place to start. But what about when we see, like, blatant lies, like those text messages we talked about, the racist ones. How do we deal with that? That's where fact checking and, and knowing how to read the media comes in. We can't just believe everything we see, especially if it's trying to get a rise out of us. Take some time, check the facts, use sources you can trust. There are tons of great websites and organizations out there that help you separate truth from fiction. So we got to be like information detectives. Exactly. And don't be afraid to call out disinformation when you see it, whether it's online or, you know, face to face. Share the real facts, challenge the fake stuff. And if it's harmful, report it to, you know, whoever runs that platform. So be proactive, not just sitting back and letting it happen. Exactly. And education, it's huge. We need to teach ourselves and the next generation how to think critically in this crazy information world, support those media literacy programs, encourage critical thinking in your own families and communities communities and fight for policies that make media literacy and digital citizenship a priority. So it's a like a multi-pronged attack, mm -hmm. you know, individual action, community involvement and changing the system. It is. But the good news is there are already people doing amazing work on this. Journalists, fact checkers digging for the truth, teachers creating new and innovative media literacy programs and activists, organizations holding these platforms accountable for all the disinformation spreading around. So it's not just feeling helpless. It's finding those places where we can make a real difference. You got it. <laughs> and remember, even small things can have a big impact. Talking to your family about media literacy, sharing a fact check online, supporting groups that are fighting for truth and holding people accountable. These things might seem small, but they add up. It's like we're not in this alone. There's a whole community of people out there who care about truth, critical thinking, and having real conversations. And that community is growing. More and more people are realizing how dangerous disinformation is and how important it is to be media literate. There's a whole movement happening to take back our information spaces and build something that's trustworthy and fair. That's that's pretty inspiring. Makes me think we can get through this, you know, come out the other side stronger, smarter, and more connected. I think so, too. It won't be easy, and there will be bumps in the road. But if we work together, if we stay informed and engaged, I believe we can create a future where truth wins, where critical thinking is the norm, and where we can have productive, meaningful conversations 
even when we disagree. Yeah, that's a, that's a great way to put it. It's a call to action for all of us to be more aware of what we read and share, to talk to each other respectfully, and to build a society that's smarter, more compassionate, and more resilient. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. Yeah, absolutely. And keep exploring these issues. Keep having those important conversations and be the change you want to see in your own community.